Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder and this is episode 3 of AI. Today I'm going to show you how to create a state machine to manage your enemy states. So each of these characters is in an idle state until I walk in front of them and then uh, when their health drops to zero they enter a death state. Uh, and sometimes they get pent up against each other. Sweet, so let's get into it. You can check out the previous episode in the link above. The first step is to create the state machine. Uh, so there's two files here I've created, AI state and AI state machine. And we just need to create a third component on the agent called AI agent. And this component will hold an instance of the state machine. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, we'll just implement both of these files. So the first one is the AI state and uh, it's not going to be a mono behavior. So you can get rid of that and the, the body as well and uh, replace the word class with interface. And this interface is going to be implemented by each of our individual AI states. Uh, so each state is going to have an ID associated with it. So we're just going to create a new uh, public enum called um, uh, AI state ID. And the first state that we'll implement is uh, chase player. So the uh, first function for the interface is just going to be uh, getting the ID for the state. And then the next three are pretty common for state machines, the enter, update, and exit. Uh, so just create each of those now. And um, each of these functions is also gonna take the agent as a parameter, uh, which is that component we just created before. And this lets the states basically communicate back with the game object. Cool, so um, yeah, that's it for the AI state. The next step is gonna be implementing the state machine. So if you just open that up now, uh, delete the mono behavior and the body, and the first property we're gonna create is the array of states. So the number of states that we're gonna have is equal to the number of uh, values in this enum. And the next property is going to be the agent uh, and create the constructor by typing CTOR and then pressing tab tab. It's, uh, it'll auto complete and yeah, it's a really amazing habit to get into if you can. I'm trying to get into it myself. Uh, so yeah, the constructor should take a single parameter, which is the agent. Um, so you can just store that using this dot agent. And now we need to allocate this array, uh, but first we need to get the number of states to allocate. So we can do that by reading the number of values from the enum using uh, system.enum.getNames and then passing in the type of the enum that we want, which is AI state ID in this case and uh, called .getLength. Now we can use that to allocate a new array of AI states using the number of states. Cool, so the next function is gonna be called register state. And what this function is for is basically to just store like pre-allocated uh, states into this array. So we're not allocating these at runtime. Um, so we can get the position to store the state uh, by casting the ID of the state to an integer and then just uh, using that index to insert it into the array. Sweet, so that's pretty much it for the state machine at this point. So if we just jump back into Unity, Open up the AI agent script and uh, just create a new instance of the state machine, uh, which I'm going to call <laughs> state machine. And yeah, you can just create that inside start and then pass in the agent like so. Sweet. Um, not the agent, it's gonna be this, isn't it? Yeah, because we are the agent, sweet. And yeah, now we just wanna be able to update the state machine, but um, that function is completely missing. So I'm just gonna implement that now called update. And uh, yeah, the state machine currently has no idea about what state it's actually in. So just create a new variable called uh, current state, super imaginative today. And uh, the AI state ID is gonna be the representation for it. So we just need to create another function which will return a state uh, from a state ID. Uh, so state ID, this should be pretty simple. Um, all we need to do is just get the index by casting the state ID to an integer and then return the state at that specific index. And now inside update, we just call get state, passing in the current state and then call update and pass in the agent to update. Sweet, so now inside the AI agent, we can just, uh, inside update, just call state machine dot update. And yeah, that's it. Cool, so um, now the state machine has basically got the ability to update the current state, but we can't actually change states. Um, so I'm gonna create one more function called uh, change state, <laughs> change change. Um, I mean, change state is probably, Probably a better name. Uh, so yeah, create a new function called change state and it's gonna take a new state, which is a state ID to change into. 
so now we have this function, it should be pretty easy. Uh, we need to basically leave the current state we're in by calling get state current state dot exit and pass in the agent. And now we set the current state equals to the new state. And now we get the current state and call enter because it is it's now the current new state because uh, we assigned the new current state. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, yeah, so we basically exit the, the state that we were in and enter the, the new state that we are going to. Sweet, so now we have the state machine and we have the ability to change states. So on inside the agent, um, I'm going to create one more property, which is going to be the initial state. Um, that the state machine should be in. So just gonna call state machine dot change state into that initial state. And yeah, so the AI agent is gonna put the state machine into an initial state at startup. Sweet, um, that's a lot of typing for not much action. Like the only thing that we've really produced is this component with one property with one state. Sweet, uh, so now it's time to actually create a new state, um, which I'm gonna do now create a new script called AI chase player state. And this script is not gonna be a mono behavior. It's actually going to inherit from that new interface that we made called AI state. So you can just uh, get rid of the body of that and use alt enter to implement the interface. So get ID is just really simple. We just return the state ID dot chase player and then can just get rid of the default implementations for enter update and exit. Cool, so most of the implementation has actually already been done in the AI locomotion. So we're just gonna copy, uh, or basically cut and paste everything from update of AI locomotion to update inside the state here. And similarly for the start function, just cut uh, those few lines here into uh, the enter function. And finally, just need to move across these four properties from the AI locomotion into the chase player state. Sweet, so uh, the only thing left in AI locomotion is just setting an animation property uh, uh, based on the agent's velocity. So the chase player state, um, there's a couple of things to fix up. Uh, previously, the agent was referencing the nav mesh agent, but inside the chase player state, agent actually refers to an AI agent. Uh, so we need to just get a reference to the nav mesh agent uh, on the AI agent, and then we can reference it uh, via that way. So I'm just going to rename this to uh, nav mesh agent and just use alt enter to import the namespace like, like that. And uh, inside start, we can just call nav mesh agent, get component, nav mesh agent. And finally, inside the chase player state, we can just go agent dot nav mesh agent dot has path. Cool. So yeah, basically what that's doing is making the AI agent kind of the central uh, housing ground for all of the subsystems that uh, that all of the states are going to need to access. So this last area here is uh, just a namespace issue. So just alt enter that one and it will automatically import the correct namespace that you need. There's one more thing that we need to do is uh, create an instance of this uh, AI chase player state. So where we create our state machine, basically what we need to do is just uh, call that uh, function we made before register state and create a new instance of the chase player state. Sweet, so uh, we've kind of gone backwards a little bit in the fact that these two properties here, we used to be able to tweak via the inspector, uh, but now they, they're they a property of AI state, they're kind of uh, hidden away a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is uh, create a new scriptable object to house uh, all of the sort of tweakable properties for an AI agent. So I'm just gonna create a new script called AI agent config and this is not going to be a mono behavior again it's going to be a scriptable object uh, so you can just inherit from scriptable object add the create asset menu tag and just get rid of the body like that cool so the ai chase player state just need to move these two properties across onto the ai agent config and uh, now we just need to create, we'll basically add an instance of this AI agent config to, you guessed it, the AI agent. Um, and now finally inside the chase player state, uh, we can just reference those properties via the agent.config. And lastly, we actually need to just create an instance of that scriptable object and assign it to the AI agent. So just hop back into Unity and then create an AI agent config 
And I'm just going to call this AI default configuration, if I can spell it, and just assign that to the AI agent in the inspector. Cool. So hopefully that all made sense. Um, so now if I press play, uh, we should have the agent following us around just as it was before. Uh, there's nothing new here except uh, now we have this uh, configuration object and I can, uh, for example, tweak the max plan time to three seconds and then the AI agent will take three seconds to to figure out where I am again. Cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the um, AI uh, chase player state. Uh, the next thing to do is actually work on the death state because um, what happens now is if I shoot the agent uh, the game crashes and that is because the um, the chase player state and the agent is basically trying to die and chase the player at the same time. So we need to create a separate state for the death of the agent. So the death state should be a lot simpler if we just create a new script called AI death state. <laughs> which is a bit grim I suppose but kind of makes sense uh, so this is going to inherit from AI state instead of mono behavior so you can get rid of that um, and then implement the interface explicitly get rid of the body here so AI state ID we just need to add a new enum to represent the death state and now we can just return that inside here uh, like so and then just get rid of the default implementations here cool so now we need to just register this death state with the state machine. So we can just call state machine dot register state new AI death state. Nice. Uh, so most of the logic for the dying is actually inside this health script. So I'm just going to cut that and move that into the enter function of the death state. And this is going to give a ton of errors because we don't have access to the ragdoll, the health bar or the skinned mesh renderer. So I'm just going to go and add that to the AI agent, uh, which I'll just do quickly now. Sweet, so in the death state, now we can just call agent.ragdoll, agent.ragdoll, agent. I think I called it UI just to be more succinct. And the skin mesh render, I just called mesh. Sweet, so the die force again is another uh, property that was on the health component. Um, so this die force can move across onto that AI agent config that we created before, which is super handy. So I'm also just gonna give this like a default value of like 10, for example. And uh, the death state can now just rep uh, reference that using AI uh, agent config. Cool. So the direction one is a little bit weird because it's uh, it's a property that's set at runtime, and it's not so much a configuration value. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually uh, create a new property on the death state. <coughs> property of the death state. <laughs> it sounds like kind of political or something. I don't know. Uh, so the property is the direction and uh, we're going to set this uh, inside the health script so what we need to do is get reference to the um, the AI agent and we're not using the ragdoll anymore so I'll just repurpose uh, this this variable here so if we just get a reference to the um, the state machine uh, we can get the, the state so it's going to be AI death state death state equals agent dot state machine dot get state AI state ID dot death and we need to just cast it as the uh, death state like that sweet so now we can call um, death state dot direction equals direction and finally we can just call agent dot state machine dot change state AI state ID dot death state sweet so now our um, health component is basically changing the state machine into the death state when it's detected the agent is dead which is yeah pretty cool so now if I hop back into Unity and let everything compile, uh, if I hit play, then hopefully we don't get that crash anymore. And let's test that out. So if I just shoot the guy, yeah, nice. So he dies uh, gracefully onto the ground and is no longer trying to chase the player and die at the same time, which is awesome. And the last state that we're gonna implement is the idle state. So I'm just gonna create a new script called AI idle state and just open this up. So this is also gonna inherit from uh, that new interface that we made, AI state, and just get rid of all the, the gunk there and implement that new interface. So we just need to add a new ID for this uh, this new state, so that's gonna be idle, and just return that inside uh, get ID. Um, 
Cool, so now inside enter uh, and update, exit, just get rid of all those. Now we just need to register the idle state with the agent um, inside the state machine. So we can just call register state new AI idle state. And now we are ready to go basically. So what we're gonna do is basically just check if the player has walked in front of the uh, agent. And if it has, then we're gonna move to the chase player state. So the chase player state already has the player transform. So I'm just gonna promote this up to the agent level uh, just because it's such a common thing that I think all states are gonna need that really just makes sense to, to put at this level here. So yeah, just like that. Now I just need to update all of these references. So it's gonna be, Agent.player transform, agent.player transform, agent.player transform. Sweet. Um, so now inside the update function, we're ready to go. Uh, we can get the player direction uh, by calling agent.player transform dot position minus the agent.transform dot position. And I just want to first check if the player is like too far away, uh, then we're just going to bail out early. So what I'm going to do is create a new property on the agent config. And this is just going to be called like max site distance. And this is just going to represent like how far the agent can see, I guess. Uh, so just set that to five by default and then just check if the player direction dot magnitude is greater than max site distance, then bail out. Oh, sorry. So this is going to be agent.config.maxSiteDistance. And now we just want to check if the agent is facing the uh, player, then the player direction and the agent's direction are going to be roughly aligned or 90 degrees. Uh, so what we need to do is just get the agent's direction. So agent direction is going to equal the agent.transform.forward. And we're going to take a dot product. So I just need to normalize the player direction because uh, that's not guaranteed to be normalized uh, normalized at this point now we just get the dot product and that's going to be vector 3 dot dot uh, player direction and the agent direction agent direction cool so now uh, we just get the dot product if that is greater than zero then we want to get the agent dot state machine dot change state into the chase player state Sweet, so now if we jump back into Unity and if I put the agent into an idle state by default uh, like this, then we should just see the agent basically just hanging out doing nothing. And then uh, when I walk in front of it, ole, sweet, it, uh, it starts following the player. Cool, and that's it. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to stay tuned to the next video in this series. Kakite.